given that you are on a battleground that requires some kind of control of a beacon yep. or a territory, he is very powerful on, especially when played here by Hydra. So, Rexar ban could be a thing. Also, a Rexar pick could be a thing as well. So, uh, we'll see if that it will be the choice. Uh, Vikings, not so much here on Dragonshire, too small. Uh, you can put three Vikings in top, but yes, we get to see that from Hydra. Yes, you can. That was uh, a good old little trick that we used to do in Europe sometimes, and it had a lot of strength to it. Um, so back in the good old days. Back in the good old, ye olde days of Europe, as we have a very storied history of wars and medieval times. Uh, yeah, that's when the Vikings were around. Literally. <laughs> a little bit before that. Never mind. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so three lessons. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Well, Expert will get their ban. Do they ban out Rexar? I don't mind a Rexar ban again. I'm I honest. I really don't mind a Rexar ban again. But they're going to ban hacker. That still has a lot of control over this map as well. No surprise. Uh, for them to prioritize something like that. Synergy, Hivering the Medivh, and I think that'll be a theme. Oh, yeah. Then <laughs> they will just keep banning that. They know that... Well, I mean, look how last game went. They didn't have a Medivh. Imagine the, them having a Medivh with that kind of comp somewhere in it. Like, bleh. <laughs> Dahaka being banned out. Will Expert move into the Ragnaros early? They could. I think it's they solid on Dragonshire. They could just go Varian again. The uh, Bad Benny is looking good on Varian. Um, I don't mind that. You can see also available. I don't know, because he has two Warriors in go to, and then there's also Ragnaros available. Mm. Synergy has played Ragnaros in the past, so I can see them grabbing up on the second slot. He's very powerful on this battleground in particular. My question for you across this whole draft is where does Nazebo and Zul Control come in? Because there's only so many bands that you can go to. Does Team Expert just eventually get it, or does Synergy try and take some of the components away? Zarya. Zarya pick up. Ooh. If Synergy were to take components away, I think you would do it now. As Expert has shown in the past, they are willing to take Zebro and Zul in their second phase, and they have all three selections available for them here. Mm. So Synergy needs to make that choice. I wouldn't mind a Ragnaros and a Zul pick here. Murd and ETC, though, picked up for Synergy, and they're going heavy on the Warriors. That's a pairing that we don't see often. The, the idea of this is to control bottom and mid lane and then make the rotation so bonkers scary for Team Expert with power slide into uh, into the Storm Bolt that Team Expert thinks twice about, say, trying to compete with that. Yeah. But, hmm. They naturally start to slow down the rotations if they don't know where Murd and ETC is at. Yes. Look, that's the idea here. Is it the attempt here to shut down Experts? Ragnaros will snap pick by Experts and all. Attempt to hold that top lane. Now for the third pick. This is where we'll see the Zul slash Zebo if it is going to be the choice for Expert. Malfurion is still floating around as a choice. Now one thing that stands out is with Ragnaros already picked to control that top lane, unless Synergy actually has a triple warrior composition in mind, there's not a huge amount of melee assassins or ranged assassins that deal with Hello. Ragnaros in a solo strength. lane. So already I'm a little bit fearful for Synergy in that top lane. If that's to uh, become a problem, and the only third warrior I can think of that might have a little bit of a better time against him is Leoric. So, hmm. interesting, interesting. What do you think about the ban here? Do you just get rid of Zul? Wave clear is kind of minimal, except for Ragnaros in the top lane. I think you do get rid of Zul because, hmm, not with a. Z so they've. Team Expert has ran Ragnaros, Zul, and Nazebo in the past on this map, but not with the Zarya. So I don't think they're going to go Zarya solo warrior. And at the same time, I don't think that they would have two warriors, a Ragnaros, and a Zul. I can see them running a solo Zul, though, instead of a solo Nazebo. They've done it in the past. Blade is comfortable on the hero. Granted, he could be on Ragnaros here, so maybe that won't be the pickup. I'm in this weird realm where I would like a solo Nazebo over a solo Zul with the Ragnaros mm -hmm. uh, here and the Zarya. I, I'm not 100% sure, though. Uh, I'm, I'm still debating it. I like the Varian ban because, again, I don't think Zarya is going to be alone. And Taranda. They are they're anticipating a heavier warrior comp. Uh, so they're taking away Taranda. Nazebo gets controlled. I like that on the side of Synergy because, again, I was expecting the potential of that Nazebo to follow up the Ragnaros. Um, so that's a lot of technical damage that they've got there. If you would have told me three or four weeks ago that we would have Zebo and Sergeant Hammer being controlled and Duras <laughs> consistently, I would have said, You're, you are crazy, James Calaris. You are crazy. <laughs> James Calaris, Carl, how dare you? <laughs> um, 
Okay, so we need another warrior here. Um, what do you think about Johanna and Zarya? So you can have that wave clear in the rotations, and then you get a solid Johanna damage DPS or Vala maybe for the fifth pick. Yeah, maybe, maybe. The thing is, is that they need to somehow equal out the four man. So what? What it looks like? Who are they putting in the solo? I guess Nazebo's in the solo. Um, but so Muradin, etc. Sergeant Hammer. This has m more kill potential with whatever hero, um, support that they're going to take on that middle to bottom compared to what they had on the previous game because there's so much CC and ETC and Muradin. So I, I, I like that better for them this game than the previous. Yeah, lots of lockdown for Synergy. Tychus and Stitches. Jeez, Louise. Again, just stop predicting what Expert wants to pick up. Stitches coming on the left field here. Now, there is obviously some thought process behind this. Sergeant Hammer can't siege up against Stitches. One of the uh, soft counters that you saw in the past. Almost hard counter, some would say. Getting those hooks can be great. Now, there is a strong front lane that is very powerful here to prevent those hooks from being effective. And Azebo's wall is actually a great deterrent as well. And Gargantuan. But Team Expert hoping to get more out here. I do feel like the wave clear is slightly low, but then you look over to Synergy and they have low wave clear too. It's mostly about control. That's very interesting. Yep. Um, I did not, in my wildest dreams for this Expector Stitches, Brightwing is going to be the healer choice here for Synergy. Let's just write that down and then we can talk about stuff. So, Team Expert is looking at Synergy's draft. I'm probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking. There's so much kill potential for them with ETC and Muradin between those two lanes at the bot that trying to counter rotate them there in between the bushes, you know, where all that craziness goes on, is probably fraught with danger. Mm. Why don't we just hook someone out of that, root them with Malfurion, and then just focus and then them kill down? Them. Yeah, that it could work. In a, in a weird way. <laughs> it, it could definitely work. Uh, even if they hit Murden here, uh, ETC may be less so because he can never escape after the root duration does fall. Yeah. Right wing of cleanse will be helpful for this too. So the early game for experts is going to be important. Now, last game they had a very strong early game. The rotations were on point. If Stitch's hooks are on point here too, I can see them getting started very well here in the early game. Yeah. Um, but there are tools for synergy. Clans with Brightwing, you have ETC and Murden, which are tanks that you normally don't want to hook into uh, your team. You also have Nazebo here with the wall, which I don't know if you've seen in the past, but one of the uh, the old ways <laughs> to deal with stitches is you would drop the Alt W so the wall would come up around you and then yeah. you would just throw out stuff and then they just can't hook you, uh, which is a fun little interaction. <laughs> uh, and then Sergeant Hammer, all she has to do is not siege up and play behind her tanks. Because that used to be one of the biggest ha st um, deniers of Hammer. Stitches, you mm -hmm. would siege up and then, haha, we know who you are, yum, 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 and then it would be happy times. But yeah, I think I'm going to assume at this level that might not happen as much. <laughs> and then in terms of lanes, Ragnar should be fine in the top lane. Who do you put top lane? I guess, I guess you're right. Maybe Nazebo goes up there. You know what I would like? What's that? Because sometimes what you see for to protect hammers that are sieging up quite aggressively is a heavier front line. So Muradin ETC is obviously that heavier front line. So. Go shish kebab. Because like, they try and stand in front of the hammer and try and make sure that they're the ones getting hooked and then power slide out or dwarf toss out. Go shish kebab. Shish kebab. And then like, I'll have two, please. Mmm, nom nom. Super nom. Expert noms. looking for dinner today. Let's go <laughs> ahead and go into game number two as we'll be having our best of five series breaking out. Expert currently up 1-0 over Synergy. Dragonshire with such odd drafts. This is what we live for here. Synergy on the far left. Sefka will be on the bright wing. Power of Dream on ETC. Neon will be playing Nazebo. I wonder if he's going top lane, man. Sarah Ice Cream will be on Sergeant Hammer. And then last but not least, Hydra Murden. All right, yep. And then over to the right-hand side in the red, it will be Team Expert. Kirsten will be on no, Malfurion. Bad Benny going to be playing the good old hooking stitches. And then ADRD will be on Zarya. Next up, Blade on Ragnaros. And finally, we do have Nick going to be playing Tychus and I mean, for the longest time in HGC Europe, we've seen it during the breaks. Stitches was sad, but now, now he's, he's super happy. Now he's got to come out to play. He's found the Nexus, and he's not finding Power of Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but do know, Kirsten immediately drop down the root. Always trust if you have a Stitches on your team at home, and you see the hooks going out, just drop the root down. It's one of the best ways to lock down the opposing team as you go in for that pickoff comp. Expert. We'll continue the rotations. Oddly enough, Blade is here in the middle, getting the push in. Should start to head top. We actually have ETC and Murden in the top lane. Right wing is their ice cream in the bottom, and Nazebo sitting in the middle. Yeah, because overall, 
their, <laughs> their laning setup is really weird. Um, we theorized maybe they would just use that for power between those two lanes towards the bottom, but this is this is a different thing entirely. It's a very strange lane setup, very uncommon. Synergy has elected to just hold out. Zebo's holding safely in the middle. That Benny's being the aggressor. They're going to take a lot of damage from this if they continue this on. Ragnaros is thinking that he's unsafe up to the top because they know they haven't seen ETC for ages. So where is he? And if they do get the lockdown on Blade, then great. One thing is that for Synergy, because they've got these two allocated to the top, there's no way in hell we're going to see Blade ever get that top shrine for now. But again, they're going to take a lot of damage elsewhere. So Synergy has to be very careful about how they continue this. Unless she has Zarya in her shield. She can build yeah. energy for free here. There's no way to really punish that with no major engage. One of the best ways to Case deal with Zarya. Oh, there's a hook. And does get clipped there. No Malfurion Root comes out, though, from Cursing. So no lockdown. Power does power slide away. The Root popping up finally there. Unfortunately, not locking him down. So we never get rid of Sea Stitches, so let's talk about his build a bit. It's going to be Tamp and Magic to start things off. It used to be a common staple on Anubarak, and then everyone was like, wait a minute, this got changed. Surely it's really good on Stitches too, and the answer is yes, that's Helping Hand. To, so you can hook out your teammates as well on the number one button, so it makes sure ADRD is nice and safe. So I should continue to poke here on ADRD, working in those attacks while the shields are not up. Sergeant Hammer now in the front. Isn't he worked down by Sir Ice Cream? That Nip and Magic, though, really coming in as uh, Sepka tries Ooh. to get in those cues. Oh, but there's that combo coming out. Power low on health. Grenade. Another Can he grenade. get the last kill? Power trying to dodge it. Will be able to escape Sepka there with the last second kill there. But still, you see the strength. Stitch hurt. Not Fury and Roots. So, also slight changes up. Crowd control comes <gasps> out from Mura to Neon. He's almost dead. Oh, bad Benny with the blind hook there. He saw him walk into the bush, but he just went ahead and went for it. Tossing out, and there was the hook. Good pickup here from Expert. They grabbed both shrines, and we have a dragon at three minutes into the game. Yes. ADRD has jumped on, though, in the bottom left. His power is going for it. Knocks him back, going for the body block. The helping hand does come out. Doesn't quite connect, but ADRD is able to escape with yeah. the assistance of his teammates. And he was also running towards the dragon, who was coming down to maybe help if, in case, that pursuit was to continue on. Now, one thing to note, while this dragon is going on a little bit of a rampage here, uh, we do have, again, crowd control at level four for Muradin. Very uncommon talent, but very interesting. It does reduce the, the cooldown of Thunderclap by 0.75 seconds for every enemy here. That means technically later on, you can be super sustainable with healing static because you're able to just get constant Thunderclaps off, especially if it goes out in Forge Momentum. That's insane healing for him. Very good against multiple warriors, but also Ragnaros. Just melee's naturally grouping up in two or three, and you're yes. good to go with that insane healing as players were mentioning. Dragon is in the top lane pushing. Power slide from Power as he jumps in. Will knock back ADRD, but the shields are already here. And Sir Ice Cream, while on Sergeant Hammer, doesn't really have the huge burst damage to get rid of someone, especially without the aid of the turrets. And also, there's, there's talents all over the board that are a little bit weird. Defensive shielding coming in for Zarya for ADRD. Ah, it's ADRD, no surprise. Uh, so that will give him 75% physical armor uh, against two opponents' basic attacks for six seconds after his shield is expired. Wonderful against Sergeant Hammer. Yes. Gonna be working those out, especially here as we move through level 1 through 19. He'll be the main source of damage. Now you can be more aggressive against Zarya and continue to bring out the damage from your beam. Solid pickup there from our Zarya player. Merc's now grabbed, pressure on the top lane. The Expert has eked out a slight lead here. Not too many hooks landing, but in terms of control of the map, they've done it quite well as they've got turrets in the bottom already. And they'll be grabbing Giants and the Knights. So Putrid Ground at level four, and he's hit by Slimer infected by Vile Gas, four stitches, as well as Toxic Gas, which increases the Vile Gas's radiance by 25%, and it's damaged by 50%. So overall, Bad Benny is expecting to be hit. <laughs> uh, he knows that it's going to be quite forward in the front lines. Quest now completed for ADRD at the level one. A lot of damage going on to a slow ice cream. If they brought down that gate, they could actually try and go for a hook here, and they're going to, oh, barely misses. Very, very close. Ice cream had to be careful. Call out though, Sefka had the pre-cleanse ready for that hook when yeah. he came out. He cleansed it, but that means cleanse is down. So the next hook could be deadly if Bad, or Bad Benny does connect it. They're clearing the walls too, just to move anything uh, in terms of surface area from preventing them from hitting other heroes. Bad Benny dancing back and forth, power blocking the hammer. Yeah, the giants are getting damaged. That's one thing that's very important is that, yes, of course, sometimes you have to pre-cleanse those hooks, but hook is on a much shorter cooldown. So technically, if they can burn 
Uh oh, that's Gorge. And they are going to get themselves a kill here. Neon looking to reinforce him towards Power of Dream, trying to use the Explosion Zone to kill him off. Twilight Dream will finish him off. That's going to be a kill going over to Team Expert with a particle grenade flying in from ADRD. And with no warrior in the front line, Synergy has to play very passive, especially not being level 10. The Giants basically got that fort with the aid of Expert as they supplemented it and make sure to defend them uh, for that entire time. So 11 to 9 here as Expert takes a solid lead, grabbing the Bomber Shrine getting more pressure for the Mercs in the bottom left. Blaze in the very top already grabbing it. And I think this answers um, Ice Cream, Sir Ice Cream's uh, question in, in the interview. He was like, oh, yeah, well, you know, these strategies don't work if you if they use them uh, many times, but we haven't the seen stitches from them many times. Great little save there. From Blade the stage around. dive attack as well. They're going to take this fight around. There goes the shield ally. Bad Benny moving in. Explosion Zone does come out to knock him over the side here. Bad Benny on the back right going for a hook. But they turn that fight around completely. Yeah, it's Blood Force going again here. Hydra's just going to have to dash on out from this fight as Avatar has been completely uh, gone now. They are not going to get hooked and they're just looking to channel this Dragonite. Very little to actually interrupt that. Here comes another Dragonite 14 expert who has seized control of this map with vigor and is looking to continue the pressure. And they will do just that. They can go ahead to the bottom lane, get keep wall breaking down. They can get the sport too at the same time, getting all experience. So kill the sport, and I think you rotate to the bottom lane. Set yourself up. You have an escape route too, especially with uh, ADRD in the explosion zone. You also have Malfurion with his brute, and those are all up in uh, the next couple of seconds here. Explosion zone now online. Heads on the bottom. Sir Ice Cream will be in the front line, setting up for the defense already, but Bad Benny still having a very healthy dragon. Yeah. Will enable his team to grab this keep wall. And they will start sieging upon it. Odin pop at the yeah. same time. Expert looking for more. Yeah, he's gonna get this wall, and as this Dragonite goes low, if he opens up the wall completely, there is a little thing that you can do, which is you can actually drop the Dragon Knight and look for a hook and then a gorge if he sees a target. But they broke down the wall with it still healthy enough to get some good damage on towards this key. So Bad Ben is just going to start wailing against it. And Synergy has no answer. Going to try and stage dive in at the back. Nice ice block instantly here from Curse and turns it around, looking for the big silence. And silence is interrupted. The Sulfur Smash comes out, but did not, does not connect with Hydra. Bad Benny will get hit by the wall. Bone Core, though, does hit. Here's a big molten swing. And Suddenly, Expert is swinging his fight around Runic Blast here, as well as a poke from ADRD. They're looking for a kill. The grenade, Neon barely survives, especially with Brightwing. Yeah, I think he still had um, Sulfurous Smash off cooldown during all of that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Cause oh, they're... he used it. It missed uh, oh, okay. it initially. Yeah, I've just seen as it comes off the cooldown. Because I was going to about to say that the bug is there still, uh, as is in Molten Core. So, all good. Just back on out. Yeah, just get away now. Save dive isn't up. You should be able to escape safely there. That flank was well done. However, Ice Block from Kirsten in particular saved that fight Oof. for Expert. Eventually, he did go down, but it bought time. I mean, the, uh, <laughs> Team Expert got what they wanted. They got the keep. Yep. They opened up bottom lane. Now in the next Dragon, I can potentially finish the game unless sort of Synergy finds a route back in. Especially with Molten Core. They just have the potential to end the game. Absolutely. So one time for the next Dragon push. It is very imperative that Synergy does not give it away as easily as we did with that last Dragon. 13 about to hit, so Sergeant Hammer can start to excel a little bit more here. Giant Killer being a wonderful pickup. Got to be careful on who you hit it with, especially with the shield, but still. Oh, Muradin, I'm so sorry, my friend. But this is a sad time for all dwarves all over the place. Bran will mourn your death. Isn't Bran dead? Bran is not dead. <laughs> Don't you do that. You're not red shirt guy. Pressure in the top. <laughs> Expert will keep those mercs pushing for now. And uh, we're going to have 13 for Synergy soon. We'll be hitting their 13, getting those power spikes going on. Moving towards the late game, but they still have seven more levels until Nazebo brings that level 20. <laughs> old dwarves. Old dwarves. They have a bad rep, man. Everyone thinks they're dead. Actually, it wasn't Red Shirt Guy that thought Falstad was dead. It was uh, Metzen. I think it was Metzen when he was questioning him. But anyway, uh, so looks like Expert going to move on up towards the top here to just wrestle this away from ETC. He does have stage dive in case he gets in a sticky situation, but... Nope, he's still mounted, so he's okay. Powers by himself, that's, Stitches. Yeah, that's sticky now. Jump out, run away. The yeah, synergy's not even moving. They're all staying by. I'm going to grab that instead. Power has to buy time. Ooh, the stage Whee! dive. He will leave here. Explosion zone slightly too late to knock him out of that. Yeah. The Sulfura smash that early, and then watching people rotate on around was like a big tell to be like, you need to get out right now, because <laughs> the Sulfura smash obviously being the only stun that Ragnaros has in that situation. And Synergy will take the time to open the wall on the bottom, get a little bit of experience. Stitch is already, though, looking for the flank. 
is on the side here. We'll knock a few people off the mount, which could give you the chance to hit a hook. But being murdered, he'll probably just dwarf toss away so they don't go for it. Instead, grabbing the bottom shrine. They are level 16. They have pressure on the top. They can get a dragon. I love that Stitches can get away with the full slam build here with Mega Smash and Pulverize because, uh, well, and also, of course, the level 4 talent, which goes technically against um, the the more standard sustain build for uh, Stitches because he's with Azaria. So yeah. he doesn't really need to be as sustainable uh, in this. And he actually does pretty good numbers, gotta say. 20,000 damage currently on him, just slightly behind Ragnaros on Heroes. Yeah, that's one of the problems with Stitches. If you don't go Putrid Bio, you have a really hard time escaping. Yes. And it can be focused yes. down quickly. But Zarya makes him a pseudo tank with those shields being available, just giving him enough of a band aid to be in the front line. Ooh. Hook comes out. Ice block from Neon. Nice mechanics is there. Saving himself, but again. Hook is a much lower cooldown than Neon's Ice Block, so now that's not going to be available for the next fight, so Neon has to play much more careful. Dragon, looking to be grabbed by Expert, as Tychus gets the bottom shrine. All right, so let's see. As Power of Dream under a little bit of pressure towards with Blade. Yeah, that's a big Q coming out uh, with that Imperosaur Furious to hit three of them. So Blade keeping himself very healthy, doing a lot of damage. Hydra is going to try and hit two members. So his, um, his Thunder Power was reducing cooldown thanks to the fact that he does have that crowd control, but not enough. He has to get on out of there. Twilight Dream kills off ETC. Get out. That didn't get in the gore. Charging Hammer started fighting the oh, bottom. No. It's Tigus. Nick is actually caught out by himself with a Stormbolt connect. Yes, it does. Ice Cream turns it around. There's the attack. Focus attack in a second here. There is the kill. And Synergy does a one for one trade. They're just trying to delay here as they are so close to 16, but it's not enough. That can still finish because they do have Molten Core available. So now they've got to be very careful. The one thing is that ETC, even if it was like, even if it was far away from him, he still has stage dive anyway. So maybe they can't finish with that. They're just going to look for extra damage towards mid lane because ETC is just about to spawn anyway. So get some damage done while you can. If Tychus hadn't have died though, that could have been brutal. Yeah, solid play here. Just going for the experience here in the middle, waiting out for the opponent's account, especially with stage dive being <laughs> up. There it is. The immediate root though from Kersen. That was. That was one of those moments where someone stage dives into a crowd where nobody catches them. So <laughs> it's like you jumped into fire and this is awkward. And you didn't hit anybody. Oh, Sorry. Power slide though, knockback. Blade is taking some damage here. Tychus is on the way as he's just spawned. Still four for versus five here. Expert waiting for their final teammate to show up. Only 18 seconds left on the dragon. Hydra will be punted away. You now deal with the catapults are in the bottom. Finally, Tychus does show up. Can't see the Odin use. Bad Bane's gonna take the time that he has left in the dragon to do some damage to the keep. Stitches is in the front line. Look for yeah. Gorge. Yeah, he needs to bring someone along with him for the ride here. Uh, oh, he's just gonna take the fight straight away as he is gonna go down. Very difficult for him to ever get out of there. This is an opportunity here for Team Synergy. Gonna get Blade here. Very, very low. No, he's not dead just yet. Shields come out. He will get Polymorph brought down in the end. Oh, but imagine if he'd have gotten towards that fort location. Oof. Bad Benny feeling a little bit too comfortable there next to Akeef, expecting Zarya to shield him through. I think if he had gotten a gorge and turned that into a 5v4 in a solid maybe spot, he and then a root behind it, then maybe he could have walked away, but yeah. he didn't even use gorge there. Got caught there in the back left. Good play there overall by Synergy, getting the defense and uh, getting two pickoffs. Yep, 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 yep. And that's where it becomes hard for the team to hold Sergeant Hammer again in the late game. She is a defense monster. We saw it yesterday, uh, as we saw Sergeant Hammer picked up on this battleground. Expert is going to have a hard time pushing into her. Now, of course, it isn't the super solid lockdown hammer where you go for graduating range, etc. It's actually just the giant killer into Executioner. But any pursuit that they go on, you don't get away from Hammer. If you're low and you're running away with somebody trying to slow you down, you don't get away from her because she will hyper thrusting boosters towards you uh, and then just keep those auto attacks focused on you hard. Bad Benny and Kirsten in the front. Could go for a hook, but no follow-up damage, so better just to wait it out. They're soaking for a level 20. Expert has yet to lose a fort in this game. That's how in control they are. In terms of rotations, mm. their solid wave clear. Just uh, really manipulating Sergeant Hammer being on this battlefield. Hook blindly goes out, looking for someone in that bush. I love blind hooks. I think they're great. Like, 
if you catch someone brilliant, then you just bring them behind your wall. But he may have stayed around for a little bit too long here. Gets him off, and that's going to be so oh. smash. Oh. And the Gorge, too. Bad Betty has someone in his belly at the moment. It's going to toss him out here. Power low on help. The Power. turret goes for the Ooh. takedown, but he does sneak away. But still two down. Oh, wait a minute. Bolt into a hook, and then Cursed falling up with the Moonfire. Three members of Synergy taken out, and the Dragons are now able to pick up the shrines at the top and the bottom will be used. Ragnaros in the middle can grab the Dragon Knight and they can just move towards the bottom lane. So Furious Smash is the true mud stomper of this game. Anytime you group up slightly for a kill with heavier melee focus, you get punished hard by that Sulfurous Smash out of nowhere as the Dragon Knight now going to march down towards bot lane. They've got a good 20 seconds here where they can try and exploit this and that's a good zombie wall to slow down the Commandeer Odin from doing anything. But Big Red Button has been picked up. This is going to be a core getting rapidly chunked. It's going to ADR. He still has explosions on too to knock him away. The root does it. Sergeant Hammer, the focus is straight up on top of her. There's going to be Brightwing face shifting in, but the thrusters will force him to go away. Bad Benny continues to focus down the core with an Azebo in his belly. That's going to be game over. No member for Expert falls here as the uh, Expert will walk away with a 2-0 victory so far over Synergy. They just need one more here and they can win the series. Yes, very, very strong to see them coming out with even a Stitches uh, play towards the end of that draft. And they did make it work. There were moments where he was a little bit too far forward. Mm -hmm. If it was equal level, then I would say that those two far forward movements were foolish, but they weren't because obviously <laughs> the follow-ups were there for Team Expert to actually just punish them. Yeah, a couple of uh, slight moments could have been bad there, but still, uh, Team Expert is showing that their teamwork is a little bit too powerful here for Synergy. Uh, Sergeant Hammer just seems to be getting rotated on constantly, game one and game number two. Yep. Uh, if you are ever in a spot where you have that hammer, you got to make sure that your wave clear is crisp or you will start to fall apart pretty heavily. We'll be right back with game number three here. Remember, this is a best of five series. This is the HEC. I am searching for an apprentice. Someone to train in the art of righteous warfare. Someone to carry my shield, my name, and my crusade after I fall in battle. Not everyone is suited for this life. The crusade is a heavy burden, but someone has to carry it. Johanna, I am searching for an apprentice. Interested? Play free and experience the new StarCraft-themed Battlegrounds. We did T for Teen.
Welcome back to the HGC. If you are just now joining us, we are watching as Team Expert and Synergy face off in this best of five series. Currently, Expert is up 2-0, and they are back to their dominant ways. Yes, they are. And they're choosing slight pocket picks here and there, which are shining through very, very well. Something like a Stitches, I think they may have anticipated similar lane setups to me, and it would have helped in that. But the lane setup from the beginning from Synergy was wacky and it, it didn't work out yeah you need your wave clear you need to be set up especially in that top lane in particular you cannot be in a spot where you can't wave clear and then of course fight over that shrine uh so it was relatively difficult mm. for them to do so uh it seems like expert seeing all these hammers lately in europe we're like okay that's fine let's bring back sergeant hammer or let's bring back the stitches to deal with that sergeant hammer yep. and we'll see if that continues to shake out let's get ready for game number three here let's find out which battleground we are moving to between uh, our two teams here in the best of the five. Now, we've already finished up on Dragonshire. We have already played uh, on our other map as well. What is going to be our third map? What will it be? It's going to Big be one? Sky Temple. All right, there's going to be a Vikings man. Yep. Undoubtedly. It has to be. Yep. They've, they ran it here, they ran it Towers of Doom, and they ran it Cursed Hollow. So, obviously, you know, something that we want to see from Synergy is something that they're willing to show. In fact, it's the most picked hero that Hydra has actually picked in the HEC, yeah. which is so weird to say. Uh, so if you don't ban him out, do you think Expert can handle it? Um, that is a good question. I think, no, I think they have to ban it. They've shown tendencies in the previous two games. I mean, yes, they have been able to show his global presence in, the, in some of the past series that they've played, but as of late, things like Falstad, things like the Hacker haven't been as much of a focus point for a team like Expert. Um, even something like a Zeratul has really only been picked maybe once or twice on Nick. So they would have to implement those things into their game to deal with something like a Vikings. And I think that they just ban it. Don't, don't think about that. It's fine. Something to note, too, is if the Viking Band does come out, suddenly Hydra can play his Dahaka, which is something that he's played in the past and he plays very well at. True. I think one of the best ways to break Expert apart is to spread them out as much as you can. Uh, they're a team that just seems to be very strong when they are a unit S5 in terms of they're getting their pickoffs, they know who to call their targets, and they move in mm -hmm. on it. Uh, so if you get Dahaka, you get the ability to kind of break that apart a little bit more, especially with how strong he has been lately. Any other heroes that might stand out on this battleground? Uh, maybe Chin? But that is more of a, a three lane slash. You mm -hmm. need a top laner that can hold. Uh, Sky Temple requires teams to come closer together than you would normally see because of those temple faces. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything outside the norm uh, right now. I think that still Nazebo Zul can have its day on here, nowhere near as strong as some of the smaller maps for sure. Uh, but we could definitely see a Nazebo still creeping his way in because. He's got to this point in Europe now where he's actually just a solid ranged assassin, yeah. uh, even though he's a specialist, of course, but Gargantuan controls good space, Wall controls good space, and he becomes a monster at level 20. So that's my wildest pick. Hammer's still probably going to make it in. Not bad on this battleground. Yeah, pretty solid. I wonder if Hammer would even work when we go to the Clash in a couple of weeks against teams like North America. They 